This is Political News in 5. Today is March 27th, 2022. I'm Aisha Osori. And this week I'm going to focus on the APC convention or coronation as I like to call it that took place yesterday. So APC now has a brand new national team. The members who made the unity list as it's being called. 54 in all, at least my the last count. Only three women, the last count. But the truth is only 17 of these people are going to make up the National Working Committee, and those are the people who are going to make the decisions that bind the party. Of course, the deputy chairman, Zonal, and all the other positions are, are the ones who make up the 17. Now, the man of the moment is Adamu Abdullahi, a former governor of Nasarawa on the PDP, former senator on the PDP, a founding member of PDP, a member of the Board of Trustees of PDP. I think you can see where I'm going with this PDP, 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 the irony. Now, he's um, not a favorite with the APC governors. He's a northern irredentist, northern supremacist, has an EFCC rap sheet, a hardliner generally. And um, I can't help drawing parallels between him and Bamanga Toko and, and thinking that he's going to be APC's kryptonite. Uh, overall, a, a bad decision, but this is a party that's used to making them. Omisha Ray from Oshun State is the national secretary. That's also a, a member of the National Working Committee. He's also an alumnus of PDP. He beat Adebayo Shitu, a CPC loyalist and former minister of communication at Buhari's first term to the role. One would have liked to think a CPC loyalist would win over a newcomer from PDP. So there must be a story there. I'll try and find out. Ken Inamani, former Senate president, under Obasanjo's administration, also from PDP, would have been another member of the National Working Committee, but he was dropped um, from the list at the last moment. Now, most of the decisions were made in caucuses, just between party members within zones. So once we knew that the position of chairman was going to the North Central, which is where Adam Abdullah is from, all the other positions flowed from there and then the party members sat in caucuses and said you know you take this position this state you take that you take that and pretty much that's how the decision was made so not very democratic and unfortunately while on one hand you'd like to think yes it's logical to want to preempt any conflict the truth is we need a bit of healthy democracy and for young people in the party for newcomers to politics and elections there should be some rules that are com that are left open for competition so that we can build, and I say we because we all have a stake in these parties, so that we can start building democratic values, healthy competition within the parties. But unfortunately, APC doesn't have one single democratic gene, and that's why they can't govern democratically. The second thing I want to talk about is the making of the convention, which was quite chaotic. Um, people were tear gassed, pavilions fell, and it was all around disorder um, over there yesterday and the videos making the rounds on social media someone described it as a million dollar party so to speak where the party where the money was spent but not spent well you know so the food wasn't enough but it wasn't good it was cold the drinks were flat the acs weren't working that's the kind of organization that we saw from the apc yesterday and for those who like symbolism one would say that the chaos of the convention is a mirror for the chaos of governance that we see from them and as if to herald the unhealthy organization of APC. Uh, unfortunately, 200 armed bandits attacked the Kaduna airport um, yes, on Friday, on the eve of the convention. One person was killed, but thankfully the, the attack was repelled by the military. But that's just such a scary thought, you know, in terms of thinking about the future of travel. And speaking about the future, it's very unlikely from what we saw at the convention yesterday that there will be any presidential primaries to speak of. In 2023 what we can expect is a similar coronation of a presidential candidate that's sort of been designed by consensus and who better to lead than abdullahi who was in pdp when yaradua was also coronated on the eve of the 2007 elections also when another incumbent had finished his two terms in office so you can see that quite a bit of thought has been put into this unfortunately to make any person with you know presidential ambition step down in favor of an uh, of a unity consensus candidate you know that there's going to be a lot of horse trading and, co and compromise being made and the joke will be on us the average nigerian because what will be traded will be positions 
important positions like CBN governor, like minister of petroleum, minister of, uh, of finance, where instead of having men and women of substance, we will have lackeys and loyalists who have no business in those positions. And we can see the effect of the wrong people in powerful positions on our economy today and on the state of insecurity. So the joke is on us, I repeat. If you don't have your PVC, please get it. 2023 gives us the opportunity to fight for the soul of Nigeria. If we want better, we'll have to do better. We'll have to vote better. That's it this week. Stay safe, stay well, and see you again next week. Please keep watching. And if you enjoyed this, subscribe and share with your friends. Take care. Bye.